running out of time. My name is Daniel Vallis and welcome to our channel. Praise the Lord I was able to go out and take some photos of the night sky, the celestial stars, the time. Just look up and lift up our heads at what the heavens have been declaring. I was able to go out on the 23rd the other day and just see Jupiter and then the new moon was right between Venus and Saturn and Jupiter. And it's neat just to zoom in and just also just to notice the change of the last time I went out and got a real clear view of them as well too. You can see that things are really moving along. A visual countdown in the heavens reminding us that we are running out of time. And then on the right there you can see a few days later on the 26th I was able to go out. The moon had moved further along the ecliptic line. But you can also tell that Venus and Jupiter are slowly getting closer and closer to each other. And again, the sun, moon, and planets move along the line. So when you go out in the evening and you see the different planets and you see the moon, that gives you a real good idea of where the line is. And this is the line that we've been looking at where the celestial sea is also. And right here in this aquatic theme and area, we see a visual countdown. Counting down to that double conjunction we see happening on March 2nd. And I highly want to encourage you to watch and re-watch our video, The Heavens Declare Symphony. Watch it several times because there is a lot of information packed in there. Several little nuggets as well too. Things that should catch your attention. But I especially want you just to notice and be in awe of how our Father is giving us incredible wisdom. And the more that we see it, the more it drives home the reality how simple the heavens do declare the glory of God. How simple they declare what time it is. And as the Lord gives us wisdom and the eyes to see it, we can see so boldly, wow, yeah, we are running out of time. We are at a very prophetic, important time. Also, if you haven't, I highly encourage you to check out our PDF, The Heavens Declared, which documents our learning journey from 2014 through 2018, just the celestial signs, the sequence, and story leading up through that period. But that's a very important part of the celestial story that we've seen when we've looked up and we've lifted up our heads, knowing that our redemption draweth nigh. And along this learning journey, our Father has rehearsed our redemption, the story behind our redemption, the tapestry of our redemption. And as we look on the celestial clock and see it, just like the wise men who were tracking Jupiter, we have been able to see it tell further story, remind us of what is part two, what still has to be fulfilled. And so you can learn a lot there in that PDF, The Heavens Declared, also, as you see, it's so beautifully displayed and choreographed in the Heavens Declared Symphony video as well. It is so important to understand the significance of the sun finally crossing the galactic plane, the galactic equator right there, because that marks the important transition for the first time in mankind's history, marking it exactly on the winter solstice when it transitioned from Sagittarius into Scorpius. Marking a transition from the time when our Lord has been waiting to release judgments to where now the focus is now it is time to start making his enemies his footstool. So as we see the day approaching is what we are exhorted so much the more in light of knowing the rest of the story, which Paul tells us right there in that same chapter, Hebrews 10. Tells us what his expectation is, what he has done up until that point, and the next part that he is waiting for as well, too. And so as we look at this in context of the prophetic time, the last generation, we can see that everything is now ready for the rest of the prophetic events to start. And praise the Lord, we covered a lot in our recent two videos, just how the Lord has shown us and brought so much with the peace and safety warnings. Everything that scripture tells us, listen for this, look for this, look up, lift up your heads. And then also... Tied in with the tapestry of redemption, the pilgrim prophecy of that nation that would come and one day bring forth fruit for God. And they are also of the seed of Abraham, which of course brings up the promises that God made to Abraham that his seed would be in a strange land for 400 years. And as we can see that so beautifully demonstrated the parallels and also see the fulfillment of that prophecy. You know, God was waiting for that to be fulfilled as well too. And so now that we are on the other side, the 400 years are over. We are now in the time of expectation where Abraham's seed through faith should be leaving that strange land and going somewhere else. Indeed, that is part of the story. That is part of the parallels. And so as we look at the prophesied nation of those who would bring forth fruit for God, and we see we have just passed 400 years, while also at the same time, Looking at so many other parallels that the Lord worked out too. Because they are most known for the Mayflower and a ship that crossed the ocean, a huge sea of water. And that has now brought us to an important part of the story along the celestial heavens that reminds us of another sea. And remember, who escaped during the Exodus when the Red Sea was parted? Who were they? 
They were the promised seed of Abraham from that exact prophecy where God told them, your seed will be strangers in a land that is not there for 400 years. The very first exodus revolved around Abraham's promised seed being in a land for 400 years. And it ended, that prophecy was followed immediately with the exodus. God taking his redeemed people out of Egypt through the sea, through the sea. And this is so profound when we consider everything that our Father's been showing us about America, the vineyard prophecy, how he is expecting fruit. And we are strangers and pilgrims here in a land that's not ours. So many reminders of Hebrews 11, which comes right after Hebrews 10, as you see that day approaching. And now when we look on the celestial clock, we can see the last page of the Bible, but also be reminded of these exact parallels, the prophecies that we have also been seeing just finishing up too. We should also be expecting the second part, the finalizing of those prophecies as well too, of those people who are strangers in a land. We should be expecting the second exodus, the second exodus, especially as he is drawing our attention to the celestial sea. Just the other day, I was reading through the Exodus account. Exodus 14, verse 15, And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. And it's just so amazing how the Lord brought my thoughts back to Exodus in this particular phrase here. He had brought them to this particular spot right by the Red Sea. And people saw the Egyptian army coming, and they started complaining and whining. And Moses brought it up to the Lord, and the Lord said, Why are you crying to me? I'm the one who brought you here. Go forward. Why did you stop? Just keep going forward. But lift thou up thy rod, and stretch out thine hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. As I was reading through this, it really just caught my attention. The Lord pointed out how many times it really focuses on the waters were divided. Divided the midst of the sea. Huge emphasis on division. You know, I didn't just mention it once or twice. That would have been okay. But it really seemed to park on the waters were divided. Cut in half. Divided. I was like, okay, I got it the first time, the second time, third time, fourth time, fifth time, six times. It emphasizes the waters were divided. And so this really got me to thinking, the huge emphasis on the waters divided, the sea divided, and this is the same picture that the Lord has brought us to also, where we've even looked at Pisces and divided that story, knowing there's two parts of it, and looking at the different markers of that and seeing the story points right exactly to the peace and safety warning one year anniversary as well, which we're pointed to by the promise that was made in the prophecy to Abraham, also about his seed, also Isaac. And so there is so much that our Father has woven together on this learning journey, showing us it's part of our redemption. The backstory of our redemption, the backstory that led to our redemption, that led to our Redeemer coming and dying on the cross for us. That prophecy is also parallel to the component we see in our time, the nation that's bringing forth fruit for God, the strangers in a land that is not theirs, and they have just passed 400 years. It is now time for them to leave. Time for their exodus. Which means we should also look for further parallels with that original story too. And so as we look at that, yes, God is going to test his own people right before the exodus. He tested them with the Passover instructions, seeing if they can listen. Can they hear and follow his instructions? And then he brought them out through the sea by dividing the sea, cutting it in half, dividing it with the plain instructions. Go forward. Tell the people, go forward. By the time they got to the Red Sea, they had seen the Lord do so much. It should have been so easy for them to just keep going forward. And the Lord has certainly emphasized that along our learning journey too over the past months, hasn't he? Past months and years, emphasis to go forward. And this is why I have that phrase, go forward, on the timeline at the bottom relating to the book Cherith. Watching our steps go forward in faith in response to all that the Lord is showing us. How did the Hebrew children come out of Egypt? God sent them a messenger, someone to lead them out, 
brought them to the Red Sea, and he is going to emphasize to them, go forward, go forward. And pointed right at the division of the water, dividing of the sea. And of course, the Lord has also shown us that the enemy is fully aware of this important prophetic time, too. The 400 years of the strangers that are in their land, as they see it, they can't wait for the children of God to leave because they don't like the fact that they bring forth fruit for him, those who are watching and making sure they are bringing forth fruit. But the enemy is fully aware of the time. They are also aware of the celestial sea. They are aware of the astronomical time, and as we just recently covered in our videos, they are aware of the very important 2020 year of the corona. And then it was just a month after that was the inauguration where they had the occult ceremony there at the Washington Monument, observing that, that they know they have just passed that mile marker. Also interestingly tied and pictured with the reflecting pool that is right there too. So they know how this story ended the first time with Exodus and waters. I think they had the same exact expectation for the second time too. Looking up, they know we're at the celestial sea. And they know that's where the wise and faithful servants will make their exodus too, through the celestial sea. So definitely review the timeline. So much is coming up in just a few days. There's a lot going on right now, reminding us we are running out of time. We have multiple celestial events coming up very soon, but also the one-year anniversary of the Peace and Safety. We also have the New Year for Trees coming up in just about a week. We are at a very important time. Let's zoom in. You may have seen in the news just the other day on the 24th, that is when the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists put out the Doomsday Clock. They updated it for this year. They updated every year in January. So it finally came time, right at this interesting time of everything coming together, they updated it to the closest that it's ever been to 90 seconds to midnight. 90 seconds to midnight. And especially with the events in Ukraine and with Russia and just North Korea too, there's a lot where the threat of nuclear war they really emphasized that's why they are moving it so close to midnight. And so it's very poignant that as we review what our Lord has had us study and the parables to his servants, how we are to be found with our loins girded, with our lights burning. Why burning? Because it's a very dark hour. It is close to midnight. We are at the 11th hour. And so when we see a reminder in the news about midnight and being close to midnight, and the sun destruction that may come when it finally hits midnight. So much tells us that we are running out of time. And the enemy knows we are running out of time. This is the closest that they've moved the doomsday clock to midnight since the replanting of Israel. Which again reminds us of the new year for trees. Which is coming up in just a few days too. The emphasis to watch. The bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Do you hear him coming? What are you doing? Are you getting up? Are you trimming your lamp? Are you going out to meet him with your lights burning? We are running out of time. But the Lord gave wisdom of the significance of why they moved it to 90 seconds to midnight. Again, this ties to 2020. In 2020, they moved it to 100 seconds to midnight. And in 2020, that was the closest that it had ever been. It had been at 2 minutes to midnight in 2019. So 2020 is very significant, especially with everything that they're pointing about the celestial time and the prophetic time. They knew the time, and that is when they moved their clock, really letting the world know, yes, we are getting really close to midnight. And then in 2021, they decided to leave it at 100 seconds to midnight. 2022, they left it at 100 seconds to midnight. But finally, in 2023, where we are now, they moved it to 90 seconds to midnight, which now made it the closest since 1947 when they started the clock. Which, of course, when you consider what marks the last generation, what marks their final count on, on the prophetic clock, it's the replanting of Israel. And the New Year for Trees happens in January, and that's when they bumped up the clock that we are now 90 seconds to midnight, the closest since the year right before Israel was replanted. They know what time it is. Now, as you look at the time numbers that they selected, you may be able to see a significant time pattern. Particularly, again, when we consider in context of New Year for Trees, because this is the time of year when they update their clock. And in a recent video, we covered the importance of watch. That's the root word behind the almond. That's what it means. The almonds themselves even look like eyes. It's supposed to be a time to wake up because you are running out of time. So what is so unique about this number sequence, this time remaining sequence that they have emphasized, especially starting in 2020? 
the same year that we suspect as marking the final countdown, the final three watches, what number sequence do we notice? Well, since the zeros aren't important, you notice a 1, a 1, a 1, and a 9. Which again, when you consider counting from the watches that started in 2020, you see one watch, the second watch, the third watch. Notice how all three of those years it stayed the same, and it was unique from everything that had been up until that point too. On the count of three, what comes next? That comes the fourth year when they changed it to nine, which of course it really stands out 9-11, which is the enemy's expectation of the bottomless pit being opened and the Antichrist beast rising up out of the bottomless pit, like the Bible says that's where he's coming from. That is their expectation. That's what they're counting down to. Revelation 9-11. When the Antichrist shows up. They are counting down to the moment when they're going to hand a corona, a crown, to the one they've been preparing the world for. With especially the events that started in 2020, the year of the corona. And we're going to look at a lot more of that in our next video, Lord willing. But I hope you can see that the enemy has been putting out in the world's face with the doomsday clock that, yes, there is a countdown. A countdown to 9-11. A very large, sudden destruction 9-11. And it's all pegged to their expectation of what's going to happen after the count of three. The first watch, the second watch, and the third watch. And this is where we are right now in 2023. And especially to see them emphasize the 9 of the 9-11 right now. Right leading up to the New Year for Trees, emphasis on watch, right as we see the one-year anniversary of the peace and safety approaching with the celestial reminder that you are reaching the midst of the celestial sea. When we look up and lift up our heads and we look at the time of the double conjunction, which is going to be the 2nd of March, just because that seems to be a very significant mile marker in this whole story, we can see that then in a month the sun will be directly at the water stream that is coming out of Aquarius. And then as of course we look at Aquarius, we notice there's a number of aquatic creatures and themes in this area as well too. And that's why it's known as the Celestial Sea. The Celestial Sea includes Eridanus the river, Cetus the whale, Pisces the fish, Pisces ostrinus, the southern fish, Aquarius, Capricornus, and Dolphinus. And these have long historically been known as the Celestial Sea just because of the concentration of all the aquatic creatures swimming in this area. And of course Aquarius pouring out the living water too. And so the Lord really emphasized the account of Exodus, how there's a really heavy emphasis on dividing the water, dividing the sea, the midst of the sea. And so we had looked at dividing Pisces, and that brought us right to this time too. So the Lord also said, what would happen if he divided the celestial sea? Again, that story of the celestial sea is told along the line. So you should be able to mark out along the line where the celestial sea is, and you should be able to divide it and get a real good idea of where it's the midst of the sea. Where's the midst of that story along the line? Where is it declared? And so I made a marker at the prominent stars of Capricornus, and also the prominent extent stars of Eridanus the river. Now this is also interesting too, because Eridanus the river ends at the foot of Orion. So when you go outside in the evening tonight and you look up and lift up your head like Jesus told you to do and you see Sirius and then you follow it along you find Orion's belt and when you look at Orion take a look at Baal juice the head and then the feet which is Rigel that is where the very extent of the celestial sea comes up to right to his foot. And then of course you follow the belt of Orion over and you can see Pleiades. And then you keep going a little bit along the line there and you'll see Jupiter and then coming down on the other side you'll see Venus. So the celestial sea will take up most of the whole night sky. But you should be able to see important markers that will give you a very good idea of where the celestial sea is. Find Sirius, find Orion, find Pleiades, find Jupiter, and find Venus. And they'll give you a good idea of what's all in between there. And so if we take this extent along the line and we divide it exactly in the middle, you will see that it also is putting the midst right at the tail of the second fish. Right where we've been looking when we divided the story of just the fish itself, that also divided right near the tail of the second fish too, remember? And then this double conjunction on March 2nd, that's when Jupiter is going to be just a few days, just about a week after that midst marker there. 
And this was so exhilarating and it really filled me with exceeding great joy because it matched what we had already seen. It's almost like a second witness, what we had seen with Pisces, trying to figure out where the second part of that is. And then when you divide the whole story, the celestial sea, it points to the same spot. The same spot. It is so incredible. And again, Jupiter is going to be reaching that missed marker right at the one year anniversary using that time of life cycle from the prophecy that was given to Abraham about his seed. And in that same time, talking about how his seed eventually would be strangers in a land that is not theirs for 400 years. And so here we are. After that prophecy has been fulfilled, we are just after 400 years. And what is the celestial clock showing? The part of the story that comes next. The celestial sea. In the midst of the story. In the midst of the sea as well. And just to see where we are now after 400 years, there is so much that emphasizes this is the next part of the story. You know it from scripture, from prophecy. You see it being fulfilled even in your own day with the ending of the 400. The heavens are declaring so much, so much. It should fill us with exceeding great joy. Now, of course, we are also aware that the peace and safety warnings are coming up too, which reminds us that the enemy knows what time it is. They also know the rest of the story. They also know the rest of the prophecies that are in play. And so they are watching these same pictures as well too. And it caught my attention, and we've touched on this before, that right in the same midst area of the celestial sea is Phoenix, which is a modern constellation as well as Horologium, the pendulum clock emphasizing time. So in light of a lot of enemy messaging, it should get your attention that there is a phoenix, which relates to the sun, and a clock relating to time right here at the midst of the celestial sea. And particularly with a lot of messaging we've seen since 2020 relating to time and phoenixes, this should really sober us that they are fully aware of what is about to happen. Now take note that right above the second fish is a constellation called Pegasus. It is a winged horse, which of course we could say there's reminders from scripture there too as well. But you find Pegasus in the night sky by looking for the asterism of a square. There are four prominent stars in the night sky that form a square, that form a cube there. And so that's one visual way that people can find Pegasus real easily. But it's also important to remember that one of those four corners belongs to Andromeda. Only three of those stars of that cube actually belong to Pegasus. But you also notice that that triangle ends right at the midst as well, too. The three stars that belong to Pegasus of that cube. Hold on to that idea for a moment. When we look back at the timeline, now the enemy is really emphasizing time right now, too. 9-11, here at the 11th month as well, too. Reminder, at the 11th hour, we see New Year for trees. Time to wake up, not go to sleep. We need to be waking up the closer we get to midnight. And this is when we're going to need the midnight oil the most. There is so much that should be catching our attention. We also see that the Super Bowl is going to be on February 12th in about two weeks. Now this should catch our attention with what we've also just looked at because it's going to be held at the State Farm Stadium, which was formerly known as the University of Phoenix Stadium. It's going to be held in Glendale, Arizona, which is basically the Phoenix, Arizona metro area. The Phoenix Stadium right near Phoenix. Right when the celestial clock is also pointing at a Phoenix and clock two. The Super Bowl will be on February 12th. It will be the fourth Super Bowl hosted by the Phoenix metropolitan area with the most recent being Super Bowl 49 in 2015. Also held at State Farm Stadium, then called University of Phoenix Stadium. And it's also noteworthy that at this upcoming halftime show, they're going to feature Rihanna. So the last Super Bowl here at the Phoenix Stadium was in 2015. Now that should catch your attention. Back in 2015, that was held on February 1st. And the halftime show was by Katy Perry. NBC's broadcast of Super Bowl 49 is the most watched program in American television history. This one in 2015, with it reaching 118.5 million, which if you round that up, it's 119, by the way, 911, during the Super Bowl halftime show featuring Katy Perry. You think it's coincidence at the time 911 
with this halftime show by Katy Perry in 2015 at the Phoenix Stadium? Not at all. Now again, remember our celestial learning journey. When did it start? In 2015 with the star of Bethlehem at Leo the Lion, marking the same parallels to the celestial events that the wise men saw. And it was when we saw those and the world talked about it even then that we started tracking what is Jupiter pointing to? Just like the wise men watched it the first time, we are going to watch this story. What are the heavens declaring? And that has brought us to 2023. Now you also remember in 2015 the Lord started our celestial learning journey, the YouTube channel especially, focusing on time, time CERN in the Bible. That was our first real video of this YouTube channel. The Lord bringing attention to time and how it will be changed when the Antichrist comes up out of the bottomless pit. And then just a few days after that, when I gave that presentation, that is when the Star of Bethlehem occurred, and then the American Blood Moon and just all everything that the Lord was working at that point. That is how our learning journey started. This one that we're on still today, looking in 2023, it started with those events with Leo the Lion in 2015. So in 2015, February 1st, what happened at the University of Phoenix Stadium with Katy Perry? Well, because the halftime show was sponsored by Pepsi, it started out with the Pepsi logo. But that immediately transitioned to a sun, a fiery sun, being divided down the middle. Divided down the midst of the sun. And what was Katy Perry on? Do you remember that? She was on a giant Leo, a giant lion. And what was she dressed as? She was dressed as a phoenix, walking down the midst, dividing the sun which the phoenix is related to the sun, walking down the midst of it as it was divided right in front of her. Right just a few months before the Star of Bethlehem sign that would be seen in Leo the Lion. Portraying a sun and also a fiery path too. They varied the colors of the surroundings so it made it look like she was walking down a fiery path. Down a fiery stream, walking down a bed of ashes, reminding and portraying the fiery stream that flows from the throne of God. She was literally portraying the Milky Way, the sun at the Milky Way with the opening sequence, with the division also emphasizing the dividing line that is at the dividing of the Milky Way, the Milky Way galactic equator in 2015. They knew the importance of what the celestial clock was about to start ticking down to. A once in mankind's history astronomical event that would happen in 2020 relating to the sun crossing the fiery stream. And you should start watching in 2015 with the events that are starting in Leo. And this phoenix figure had several other sequences that they did as well too with chess pieces moving into position, singing about a storm is coming, her song Dark Horse. Which again points to the Milky Way because right at the Milky Way there is the nebula Dark Horse. Multiple times in 2015 she was pointing forward to the celestial event that they were looking forward to in 2020 with the Corona. And the events are going to relate to the Lion of the Tribe of Judah. And they were going to be moving their chess pieces across the world into place the closer they got to 2020, the year of the Corona. Knowing it relates to the midst, going through the midst. She finished out her sequence with fireworks, also as a shooting star, which was also interesting that they showed it as two stars coming together. And what was unique about the Star of Bethlehem sign that was seen in 2015? It was a conjunction of Jupiter and Venus. Two visual stars conjuncting together. And so I thought it very fascinating in 2015, months before that event happened, they're showing a joining of two stars, a lion, and how that's important that that lion is crossing the fiery stream that's at the Milky Way. Because that is going to signal a change from one chamber to the next chamber, the next expected part of the story, the next prophetic events, when from their perspective they're looking for the Antichrist to come onto the scene. And so that's why they're looking forward to it, but they are fully aware of the time and the events at Countdown that have been in sequence since 2015. Leading up to 2020 and here where we are in 2023, the apparent conclusion of that story with the midst of the celestial sea.
And this upcoming Super Bowl, which is on February 12th, is also at the same place, the first Super Bowl to be held there since 2015, at this University of Phoenix Stadium, now named State Farm, but still it's the same thing, Phoenix Stadium. That same messaging is still there near Phoenix. And who is the halftime show this time? It's going to be Rihanna. And if you were watching Time and Prophecy subjects back in 2015, you may remember this came up when Rihanna went on an Instagram spree at the White House. And this was a story from Time magazine. But she made a little bit of a stink when she went to the White House and basically turned it into an Instagram spree, taking a whole bunch of pictures. But what caught people's attention was her outfit and also some very curious things that she did while she was there. Because when they got to the White House, they made it obvious that she was going to the phone and asking them to open the gates. Which normally you would think her driver would do that or something like that. But again, she's taking photos of this whole event of her calling and asking them open the gates to the White House, a very prominent location. While wearing an outfit that was very, very suggestive of the CERN particle collider. Particularly when you consider some of the other components there, Atlas and Alice and just the other components that are even colored very similar to some of the colors she's using there. Just see a lot of parallels that this is not by accident and she's really broadcasting that she's asking to open the gates of a very important place in connection with CERN. So it stood out on the radar at the end of 2014. Back in November of 2014, that's when she had this little Instagram spree. So that caught a lot of people's attention of what's going on because a lot of research was being done and coming to awareness about CERN at that time between 2012 and 2015, especially around 2015. So it stood out, but we couldn't put our finger on anything beyond that at the point. But now it stands out that she is going to be doing the halftime show in 2023. The last one was in 2015 just about two months after she did this broadcast of this message on social media. And she has a very large following. Now that was in November 2014. Now it's important to remember that the 2015 halftime show was sponsored by Pepsi. So as they're leading up to the halftime show, as they're leading up to the Super Bowl, they are putting out commercials telling people that the halftime show is coming up and they are sponsoring it with Katy Perry. So these commercials are going out at the end of 2014, the same time Rihanna is also putting out some messaging about open the gates relating to CERN as well too. Just a few weeks after her message in early December 2014, Katy Perry came out with a Pepsi commercial that started with her coming through a doorway, very reminiscent of an alien landing, a third contact, that's how the commercial opened up. Very eye-catching and intriguing when we consider what one of the deceptions may be that's coming on the world pretty soon. Starts with an alien deception. Her coming through a doorway dressed in a spacesuit, And then she shows the audience her Pepsi Super Bowl halftime show testing facility. Where they're supposedly testing out different ideas for the show that they're going to do. And you can find links in the description box to the commercial. Pepsi has hidden theirs and made their version private but you can still find it online. Let's point out a few things that really stand out. She goes over to this machine with a robot drummer and she's working that. But in the background we can notice several things. On the left there you will notice a cube. A box. A crate. And it has a unicorn on it. You also notice that it has stars on it. You see two here. Later on you see the third star. There are three stars in a triangle. Her head is hiding one right now. But you also notice that the box is not sitting on the ground. It's floating up in the air, associated with something that looks like a unicorn and three stars. But you also notice a very prominent shark who's floating in the air and a giant whale that's also floating in the air, almost as though they're swimming through the air, swimming through some kind of water. That's what they're made to look like. Now after she breaks the robot, she turns to the camera and makes a very distinct statement, send him back to space. And so she's setting the scene for how you should interpret what she's about to show you. She's talking about things in space, things on the celestial clock. She goes over to the crate and is disappointed when she looks inside and she turns to her crew and says, I said Pegasus, not unicorn. She's wanting a Pegasus, a winged horse, 
not a unicorn. And she said this when she looked into this square cube. And then in frustration, she looks up and holds it for a second. Right at the same time, she's standing in front of this cube with three stars on it, emphasizing she's talking about boxy stars. Look up. That's what she's really talking about. That Pegasus. Then she sees floating aquatic creatures floating through the water. And one of them is even an inflatable blow-up, really emphasizing the idea that they're floating water. These aquatic creatures are portraying the celestial sea. The celestial sea that is right next to Pegasus. Right next to Pegasus. And then she goes immediately over to her time machine. A time machine, which is built to look exactly like the one from Back to the Future. And importantly, the time machine is set to 2023. Now, as she walks over, several things stand out. Obviously, it's a time machine that looks like Back to the Future. So that calls to mind a lot of the messaging that is in that occult parable. But notice they're also standing between the two celestial creatures. They are at the midst of the celestial sea. That's where this time machine will come into play, right near two fish with the two shark heads. It's going to relate to the celestial sea, two fish right in the midst, and the subject of time is going to come up a time machine. That will tie in with some other messaging that they've done before too. But you also notice in the backdrop that there's a certain number sequence that catches a lot of people's attention. 666 really stands out connected real close to this time machine. And that's not accidental. They lined up everything just so it would get that. Now on the time machine, the bottom set is for present time, where they are, and they were making that commercial right at the end of November, releasing in early December of 2014, telling people about the upcoming halftime show at the Super Bowl in 2015. The top set is for the destination time, and that is the important sequence. Because as she's walking up to the time machine, the display flashes out all the numbers in sequence on the destination time. And only the destination time flashes January 21st, 1989, 12 o'clock. Okay, so that's 1989. Well, what happens if you add up all those numbers that they just flashed before you that you need to pay attention to those numbers? Add them all up and what do you get? 1, 21, 1989, and 12? That gives you 2023. 2023 is the destination time that they're reaching with the time machine. The destination from where they are presently between then and now in 2023. She's pointing out with all the messaging about the Celestial Sea and Pegasus, it all relates to 2023. You will see the Celestial lineup in 2023 which is also going to deal with the time events. She's acting out a parable and message. Look for this in 2023. That is the destination, the expected arrival of these time events. And so again, when we look on the celestial clock in 2023, right at the midst of the celestial sea, we see a phoenix. We see time right at the midst of the celestial sea, right under a whale, right under the two fish, Right under Pegasus with the three stars, which terminate right at the midst of the sea in 2023. This is what she was pointing to leading up to that Super Bowl, and then she dressed as a phoenix, and all that happened then. You will also remember that this same Katy Perry is the one who was at the inauguration celebrating the 400. And she timed her recent video, Not the End of the World, when the sun also crossed the Milky Way, going into the next chamber in 2020. They know exactly what time it is. They know exactly what time it is and what the clock is counting down toward. And so again, the Lord has shown us so much about this learning journey. Started it with time, and I've always emphasized how he started it is going to be very important to understanding the end of it too. And the events that are about to unfold then, too. So we find ourselves in 2023, looking back at 2015, our journey started these same subjects, but also paralleled by the Phoenix Stadium with these double Super Bowl events, both pointing toward each other. Rihanna's going to be in 2023, reminding us what happened right at the end of 2014. Open the gates. 
open the gates. The last time this venue was used was by Katy Perry dressed as a phoenix. And she put out a commercial also right at the end of 2014 about a time machine pointing toward the time of Pegasus and the Celestial Sea. In 2023 specifically, specifically right on the dot, and then not too many days later that phoenix came onto the scene, a sun crossing a dividing line at the fiery stream, a dividing of the midst marked by a conjunction with Leo, with a journey also marked by conjunctions. Two stars coming together, which happened at the beginning and is also going to be happening at the end too with that double conjunction. Two pairing of stars in 2023 from the events that started in 2015. Taking place right exactly under Pegasus, right at the end of that triangle. Also right above Horologium, the clock and time and Phoenix. All of this pointed to by the Phoenix in 2014. Pointing to 2023. And this exact same Phoenix which also celebrated the ending of the 400 with her fireworks there also. It is all tied together. Praise the Lord for all that he has shown us about the time, the celestial time, the prophetic time. But then also what the enemy is up to as well. If you haven't, definitely check out our time resource, Time of Perplexity. Also our Revelation Spiral of Time playlist. If you are new to this subject... The Antichrist will be changing time. I highly suggest you watch our first videos, Time Cern in the Bible, Time Patterns and Changes, and then you can jump to the Time Intersections video. But I really want to emphasize watch our 2012 Clock Snare and Apollyon's Bow. Those are also great introductions too. Jesus Christ warned us specifically that the events that are coming are coming as a snare. Shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth? It does not matter where you are on the earth. It doesn't matter if you're in the North Pole all the way off in Antarctica. Everybody, no matter where you are, will be affected by what is coming on the world. And that's Christ's warning. That's why you have to get off the face of the earth in the escape. And that's why the rapture is necessary. Because the world is going to change. There's going to be a time of perplexity where people will not understand what in the world is going on. They can't explain it. And like even Christ said, there is a time coming that has not happened since the beginning of the world. And that includes considering even Noah's flood too. What's coming upon the world is going to be on a scale even above Noah's flood. That's why Jesus said you will want to escape. That's why you need to watch yourself, take heed to yourself, how you're living. And you need to pray always. You need to make sure your prayer life and walk with me is where it should be. You need to make yourself ready. Watch ye, therefore, and pray always that ye may be counted worthy to escape all these things, all these things, that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. Friend, there is a lot that we do not know, but there is a lot that we do know. And what we do know from Scripture, His instructions, we should follow them and apply them to our heart and life. Because it will be very, very important on that day that we see approaching, approaching very rapidly. We are running out of time. The world knows we are running out of time. The enemy knows we are running out of time. Prophecy is declaring we are running out of time. The heavens are declaring we are running out of time. Scripture also declares what's coming next too. Are we living as though we are running out of time? Are we living as though we are at the 11th hour? Are we living as though our Father has shown us so much wisdom along this learning journey that we are running out of time? Are we redeeming the time? Do we have an ear to hear? Again, as we look at the timeline, there's a lot that's going to go into effect immediately starting in February, right where we are now. New Year for Trees is coming up real quick. The emphasis on watch, wake up. And that's going to be followed very shortly by the Super Bowl. And we do not know the day or hour. Christ is coming as a thief. That's even emphasized in the peace and safety warning, where we're also warned, watch and be ye sober. All we know is a very good idea to have the expectation we will see the day approaching. We will see that we are running out of days and hours. We are running out of the approach. That's all we will know. We know that the enemy is pointing very heavily to this celestial time, to this calendar time, so much that they have messaged before. We are also looking at the prophecies, and that also points us to this area. The midst of the celestial sea, the midst of the Pisces story, is all coming together in the same area. Jupiter is going to be at the celestial sea midpoint about the 18th through the 22nd. The midst on the 23rd, 24th is all pretty much right in the same area. Right at the same time as the one year anniversary of the peace and safety warnings. Which again reminds us of the prophecy instructions that went with Abraham. 
and a prophetic birth there too, relating to his seed. And we're at a time after 400 years expecting that promised seed to make their exodus. We see the day approaching. We see the enemy warning about their 9-11 that we're running out of time. The clock is running down. The clock is running out of time on multiple levels. And this is also what the heavens declare. Are we listening? Are we living as though we know what time it is? Definitely avail yourselves of the resources listed in the description box. Our Father has provided them along this learning journey to help us prepare ourselves for the day approaching. So we will be found making ourselves ready. We will be found taking heed to ourselves. We will be found with our loins girded up and with our lights burning when He comes. Let us make ourselves ready and let us run for the prize, drawing nigh to Him with a true heart. Review the heavens, declare symphony, just review and see why the enemy knows what time it is. We can see it from a biblical perspective that yes, we know what time it is. So much comes together with the expectation the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Go ye out to meet him. So let's rise up, let's trim our lamps, let's cast off every weight, let's cast off the works of darkness, let's put on the armor of light, and let's go out to meet our bridegroom. Hearing him, heeding and obeying him, loving him, and serving him first and highest above all else. Redeeming the time till he comes. Maranatha!